Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video I'll be doing the unboxing and a quick hands-on review of the iQOO 11 5G. Now this phone is available in India in two variants. Base variant is priced at 60,000 rupees and it comes with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. And the next variant is priced at 65,000 rupees and it comes with 16GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. It's available in two colors, Alpha and the Legend. Alpha is basically the black one with a fiberglass on the back side. Whereas the Legend is a white color which actually has a silicone leather back finish. We have the Legend color in the 16GB variant. Now the most highlighting features about this phone would start with its display. It is a 2K E6 AMOLED display. Next would be its performance. It comes with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor which is one of the first flagships in India to support this processor. Next would be its amazing cameras. And the fourth one would be once again it's super fast charging speeds. Well in terms of charging speeds it isn't really surprising because even the iQOO 90 which was launched last year came with 120 watts power adapter. Anyway the main highlights would be its display, performance and the cameras. By the way I must tell you that for this iQOO 11, iQOO has completely redesigned its packaging. Well it's the same black box but now it has a nice leather finish to it. Like a very small kind of difference but it does make a difference. Anyway, let's get on with unboxing. Here's the box. On the front, we have the iQOO branding, BMW branding, and it says Motorsport. On the back side, we have pricing and some other information. Let's unbox it. First, we have the phone, followed by barcode stickers. That's followed by a SIM card ejector, which is actually placed in the cardboard. Next, we have the BMW M series card picture, followed by a transparent silicon case. Next, we have some more documentation, followed by a 120 watt power adapter and a USB Type-C to Type-C charging cable. Now here's the phone. Let me just remove the cover. Now this is how the phone looks on the front and this is how the phone looks on the back. Just for initial impressions guys, this is the legend color that's basically the white which comes with silicone leather finish on the back and I must say it looks and feels really good. Like I also have the iQOO 90 which has a fiberglass on the back and is super slippery. Well, compared to the iQOO 90, iQOO 11 is definitely pretty good. It fits pretty comfortably. And because of the silicone leather, it has great grip. On a side note, both phones, the iQOO 90 and the iQOO 11 actually weigh the same, but weight distribution on the iQOO 11 has been done really good and it feels pretty lightweight. Like it weighs about 208 grams, but it feels pretty lightweight, like around 170 grams. Anyway, first let's have a physical overview. On the back side, this phone comes with a silicone leather finish, which definitely looks and feels great, but it might get dirty pretty easily. So I would recommend you to get a case and on some occasions you can use it without any case and that'll look really good. At the top, we got the camera module with a triple camera setup. It says V2. Yes, this phone also comes with a dedicated V2 chip, which enhances photography in low lighting conditions and also helps to improve the frame rates while playing games. I'll talk more about that later. Following that, it also says ultra sensing. On the right side, we have three strips in red, black, and blue, which are for BMW motorsport thing. And it says iQOO here. And it also says fascination meets innovation. Now on the front side, we got a punch hole design display with pretty slim bezels all around protected with Corning Gorilla Glass Victors. And as you can see, the display looks pretty amazing, especially the bezels. Now about the display, we got the regular earpiece and some sensors. Earpiece also acts like a secondary speaker and below the display, it's completely plain. Now for the sides, on the right side, we got the power and volume buttons made of metal. They are sufficiently elevated and also have a nice clicky feel to them. At the top, we have the secondary microphone for noise cancellation and the infrared sensor to use it as a remote. On the left side, it's completely plain. And on the bottom, we got the speaker grill followed by the USB Type-C charging port, primary microphone, and the SIM card tray. Now here's a SIM card tray. We can use dual SIMs on this phone and there is no SD card option. By the way, the central frame or the central grille of the phone is made of airplane grade aluminum, which can help you with temperatures and sturdiness as well. And it's also pretty light in weight. By the way, this phone, I mean the legend version, has a thickness of 8.72 mm, while the alpha edition, which is the black version, has a thickness of 8.4 mm. The extra thickness and also a bit of weight is because of the leather texture. Now let's look at the complete specifications. On the rear, this phone comes with a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel primary camera with GN5 sensor, which is from Samsung. It also has optical image stabilization. That's followed by an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with 116 degree field of view and a 13 megapixel telephoto lens with 2x optical zoom. By the way, there is no macro mode or a dedicated macro camera on this phone. For selfies, we get a 16 megapixel camera with f2.4 aperture. We also got a dedicated V2 chip for ultra sensing image processing. 
Now when it comes to the display, this one has a 6.78 inch E6 AMOLED display with 2K resolution with up to 144Hz screen refresh rate. It's up to because this screen refresh rate is only applicable for a single game right now and normally it runs at 120Hz. It also has HDR10 plus support and LTPO. Now when it comes to performance, it sports a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor with LPDDR5X RAM for both 8GB and 16GB variants and UFS 4.0 for storage, that's basically the 256GB variant. Now these are the benchmark scores. For people who are concerned about the gaming performance of this phone, this phone also comes with vapor chamber liquid cooling system which can actually further reduce the temperatures. Besides that, we also have some pretty cool gaming related features which I'll talk at the end of the video. Now for the battery department, this one has a 5000mAh battery and also comes with a 120W fast charger inside the box. And you can completely charge your phone from 0 to 100% in just about 20 to 25 minutes if you're not choosing the AI charging mode. Well, it has two charging modes. One is the default mode where it'll charge the phone completely from 0 to 100% without worrying about the phone's temperature. There is another AI charging mode which throttles the charging speed to maintain the phone's temperature. You can go with either options. If you go with the fastest one, it'll take about 20 minutes. And if you go with the AI charging mode, it'll take about 30 to 35 minutes. Anyway, it's still pretty fast. Now, this is how the phone looks once we turn it on and set it up. This is the app drawer. There are a lot of bloatware and here's the notification area and this is the settings page. Now let's check the about page. This phone is running Funtouch OS 13 right out of the box based on Android 13. And as of now, it's got the January 1st security patch. Now here's the storage information. Out of that 16 gigabytes of RAM, we get about 10.14 gigabytes of RAM free right out of the box. And out of that 256 gigabytes of storage, we get about 228 gigabytes of space for our user apps and user data which should be sufficient for most people. Now this is the camera user interface. It actually looks pretty similar to other Ico and Vivo phones as well, with some minor changes. For example, on this phone, we get a toggle to switch between natural colors and saturated colors, and there's no toggle for macro mode. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Anyway, on the left side, we got the portrait mode, night mode, and sports mode. On the right side, we got the video mode and the more section. We get a pretty similar interface even for the front camera. Now these are some sample shots. As you've seen, colors look a bit too saturated, especially the sky looks really blue, like really, really blue. You can tone down the colors by switching to natural colors. Now let's check out the speakers. By the way, I forgot to mention, this one comes with dual stereo speakers, but there isn't anything like Dolby Atmos, but they do have Vivo's own version of digital sound sound or digital sound. Anyway, it sounds pretty good. Here's a quick audio preview. As you've heard, speakers are pretty loud. They are great for media consumption ringtones and alarms. Now let's test the security of this phone. First, the fingerprint scanner. This phone has an in-display fingerprint scanner like most of the flagships. And here's a quick look. So the fingerprint scanner works really well. It almost instantly unlocks the phone. Next, let's test the face unlock feature. In good lighting conditions and even in low lighting conditions, face unlock works really well. It almost unlocks the phone instantly. In complete darkness, it takes about a second or so, but still it's pretty fast. Now, when it comes to connectivity, this phone supports dual SIM with dual 5G. These are all the bands that it supports. As for the other stuff, it has Wi-Fi 6 with Bluetooth 5.3, and these are the rest of the sensors. In addition, we also get the infrared sensor to control TV and AC, basically all the devices which still use infrared sensor. Now for gamers, we have some brand new features. The first one is the motion control feature where you know you can do some gestures like you can just do these kind of different motions to perform some actions. Like we can configure a quick action to you know nudge to the left side to reload the gun. And while playing, you can just do a nudge and your gun gets reloaded. It's just super fast and it works really well as well. Besides that, we also have the pressure sensitive touch where you can you know do a long press kind of a thing to perform action. Like you can move around with the left joystick and do a long press to immediately shoot. Once again, it's a pretty nice feature and can be really useful for dedicated gamers. We also got the dual monster touch feature, you know, for people who play games in this fashion, that's there as well. Besides that, you also got the ultra gaming mode, which actually bundles a lot of features dedicated for gamers. So you have to check it out yourself. 
So guys, to conclude, iQOO 11 is definitely a pretty good flagship. Like it's got the best display, if not the best display in the segment. It's got the best performance, obviously. It's got pretty good cameras. I won't say it will be as good as the Apple's flagship or the Samsung flagship, but still the cameras are pretty good, especially considering the price. And the fast charging speeds in the battery department is also pretty good. So guys, if you're looking for a flagship phone around 60,000 rupees, iQOO 11 is definitely a pretty good phone to consider, especially this legend color. So guys, what do you think about this phone? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description, it always helps the channel. With that said, this is Nikhil signing off, see you in my next video.